when we pray there are six things that happen when we pray consistently consistently number one the first thing that happens to a believer when you submit yourself to consistent prayer is that our spirits are quickened to discern our spirits are quickened to discern the quickening of the spirit that leads to discernment is the first gift you receive when you are consistent the quickening of the spirit that causes you to discern philippians chapter 4 6 and 7 let's hurry up the bible says be careful the word careful there is talking about anxiety be anxious for nothing listen but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god what happens next verse 7 it says and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding are you seeing that something has happened to you beyond the realm of understanding that peace will guard your heart and your minds do you know what it means it is a it is a dimension of discernment where the peace of god guards both your heart and your mind it's like a system of regulation it tells you something it's a language in the spirit when the peace of god can guard your heart and guard your mind most people do not even know what this is about because they have not submitted themselves to prayer consistent prayer listen to me everyone listen to me you don't have to be an intercessor you just need to be a serious person with god and your destiny at the point you make up your mind in righteousness that i will submit myself to consistent prayer consistent prayer consistent prayer praying in the spirit praying in tongues consistently you access the quickening of the spirit what does that mean i have taught you many times in this house that the, the way we have senses papa hagen would teach it so beautifully that you have your sense of smell your sense of sight your hearing your skin for touching and feeling are we together your tongue for tasting we say there are five senses biologically you know in the realm of the spirit there are more than five senses now with all due respect fathers like papa hagen would teach that there are also five senses in the realm of the spirit i agree but there are many other impulses and i taught this many years ago that there are many other impulses that a man has within his spirit that does not have physical definitions are we together now there are various channels for perceiving things that do not have their physical parallels you cannot give it language and yet you know that you have perceived things in the spirit are we learning now there is the hearing and hearing in the spirit too there is seeing and seeing in the spirit too there is feeling and feeling in the spirit too but there are other channels for perception that are not defined biology does not give us definition but they are it's, it's like your body is connected to a lot of other higher mechanisms for perception let me tell you if you pray consistently you will be able to discern immediately and, and I'm, I'm not talking of flesh and biases you can know when god is in a thing and you can know when god is not in a thing your spirit has been quickened you can shake somebody and not know why you are feeling the way you are feeling the person is not bad there is nothing evil because the physical realm only tastes and feels things that are current your spirit man can perceive tomorrow today so you can see someone who is very nice today but your spirit man is fighting 2026 he's fighting trouble that is coming from that relationship today you can't there is there is nothing exactly that should tell you why there is trouble i mean this business partner is a very nice person but your spirit has already gone and it can perceive impulses beyond the current level let me tell you this that is what it means for the peace of god to protect your heart and your mind when you submit yourself to prayer and there is turbulence within your spirit 
Even when there is peace physically, keep praying. Keep praying. Are we together now? Spiritual realities are not like physical realities. And if you do not know how to discern, you will. There are people today, with all due respect, who have passed on, who should have no business dying. They did not train this faculty. Are we together? They entered a car. Everything around them, the Holy Ghost was trying to use everything to tell them. But they could not perceive. Nor did they have the spiritual intelligence to take authority over the situation. The quickening of the spirit. The quickening of the spirit. You can see someone. Have you met someone before and you just connected as if you've known yourself for five years? It's because your spirits were prepared already. It is only physically you don't know yourself. But in the realm of the spirit, there is something about destiny. And when you saw it deep, called on to deep. That's how destiny connections happen. Let me tell you the truth. If you want to wait till you know people physically, you are carnal, you will pay the price. There's a way you can see someone and know, I, I don't know what it is about this person. One day after five years, you will meet in France and say, I saw you somewhere. Yes, truly. So you are the one who should help me. Judas never said, Jesus, I will kill you one day. Jesus saw Judas. Can you imagine walking with someone every day knowing that this is the person who will kill me tomorrow? He said, that which you do, do quickly. And he went and did it quickly. <laughs> you see how foolish he was? They've already told you, oh, that which you would do, do quickly. And the, the disciples thought that Jesus was talking about money issues. I cannot tell you how many people have been saved because their capacity to discern had been quickened there are people who have missed out on the prophetic program of God. God was going left and they went right. And they stood there wondering, God, where are you? God says, I'm on the other side of your discernment. You need to pray in this end time. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. The first thing that happens to you when you give yourself to prayer is you no more interpret life by what you hear by what you see. Look up. Many people are defeated today because their principal channel for perceiving and interpreting life are their eyes, their ears, their brain. If my eye says it is good, my ear says it is good, I feel it is good, I will do it. Ah, that is a, that's a suicide mission. There are many good things that will land you in trouble. You need to develop other perceptions. Are we together? And it does not always have to be negative. Sometimes someone can come to your company and somebody will tell you, this guy is a thief. This guy is a nasty person. He's always causing trouble. But your spirit man receives him in a way you cannot explain because your spirit has seen that there was a prophetic word mama gave on that boy and say, even though you are stubborn because you helped me, may God always use you. That is the blessing God wants your company to receive. So you can see the boy will come, he's stubborn, he's not listening. But if you can discern and ask God, why did you bring this child to this house as a house help? One day God will tell you. You see, ba, many things that God gives men does not come in packages that are beautiful. It takes discernment. Are we together now? Yes. It takes discernment. Somebody who may not necessarily be that loyal and faithful, but one day the person will be a contributor to you at a point of desperation. Desperation. I know people today who kept supposedly nobodies in their houses. When they became sick, when they became down, do you know that some of those young ladies, young guys were the people who stood with them if I made up their mind that even if Madame would die, even if Oga would die, I would stand, even when their own children ran away. There was a little girl called the slave girl. Her mother gave her a name. We don't know what her name is. But she went to the house of Naaman. You think that she went to that house on her own as part of the spoils of war? No. 
there was a relationship she had with the prophet and God kept her there because he saw the purity of Naaman's heart. Now it was up to Naaman to listen to the girl. It takes discernment. Some of the answers to your prayer are in packages that you will never receive if you are walking with your eyes, you are walking with your ears. Who is learning tonight? You must trust God for grace to discern. Because for some of you, the reason why you always fall easily is that enemies have found out that your weakness is laughter. Anybody that laughs with you, even if it's a, a knife is on his forehead, you say you are welcome to my house. Discernment. Mm. Discernment. Not every kind of kiss is a sign of love. Huh? There is a kiss that is a sign of love. But there is a kiss that is a signal. This is the person to die in this family. This is a person to go down in this family. I pray for you. Where you have entered trouble on your own. Because your spirit has not discerned from today. May God sharpen your discernment. May God sharpen your discernment. Hallelujah. It was God's servant who said. As they kept going from place to place. Looking for land for ministry. They could not find anywhere, but he got to a place and the Holy Ghost told him, this is the place. It was a forest. Same thing with RCCG. Same thing with every, there's nobody who went to their promised land and it looked like a promised land. Every promised land will look like a wilderness. It is discernment that makes you to see the unseen. Are we together now? For somebody, the job you are about to quit, God is saying stay there, not because of the salary. Stay there because God has orchestrated that by December, the helper, you see that now. You may have been treated bad in the place, but stay there. Now for many people we are controlled by salary. When the devil, I'm not saying it's wrong, and I'm not being, being uh, you know, uh, on... Uh, what's the word now? I, I relate with the pain of people. But I'm telling you why many b believers get into trouble is that they are governed by physical things. When the devil wants to move you out of the place of destiny, he flags more money for you. And you can literally move 10 years backward because 100,000 was added to your life. The first thing that happens when we pray is that we are quickened by the Holy Ghost in the place of prayer to discern. Number two, very quickly, I want you to listen to this one. What happens when we pray? We receive the prophetic blueprint for every season of our lives. Oh, this is serious. When we pray, we receive in the place of prayer not the prophetic blueprint for our destiny. The prophetic blueprint for every season of our lives. God can show you your end and you may never get there because you do not know and you do not have the blueprint of seasons. Now let me tell you this. What you call destiny is a summation of many seasons in your life. And if you do not know how to receive the prophetic blueprint per season, you will miss out on prophetic moments. Let's look at a few scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, please. 9 and 10, very quickly. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. Listen, the things which God had, talk to me, Koinonia. God had prepared. He's prepared them already. There are things, realms, dimensions he's prepared for them that love him. Verse 10, the Bible says, but God has to reveal what he has prepared. Just because it is prepared does not mean it will manifest in your life. It is prepared but hidden, prepared but shrouded. Are we together? Prepared but closed and sealed. It is in the, the place of prayer. That you afford the Holy Ghost the opportunity to reveal it unto you. Because it is only revealed by His Spirit. The Spirit in the place of prayer begins to search all things. Even the deep things of God. And those things the Bible says have been ordained for our glory. When we pray, we receive the blueprint. 
the prophetic blueprint for every season. Please look up. You've heard my story. I told you from the time God called me, I already saw the vision of nations. I already saw the visions of several people. But how many of you know that I still would have failed in ministry even with that vision? Because when my time in Zaria was over, it was not part of the initial vision I saw where else I would go. Are you seeing it now? You can have the big picture, but every season demands you receiving a blueprint that guides you for that next level. Honestly, when I knew, I began to sense in my spirit by this impulse of discernment that in truth, my season in Zaria had come to an end. But now, whether it was Abuja or it was Jaws or it was America or UK because all of these impulses had been registered in my spirit that Koinonia would find expression in all these places. But which is which? That one I did not know. If God leads you, one of the ways you will know he's leading you is he will never show you everything. No. It is page after page. Don't think he will give you the book and say go. Mm -mm. You will have to refer to him again. I've exhausted page 5 and he says prepare for page 6 and you will have to submit yourself again. Some of you started well but you are about aborting the next season because you made a blind assumption that just because page 1 to 5 has been executed well, it means that the remaining will work well. I began to pray every day sincerely investing in the place of prayer Lord, for the sake of your name, let me not miss out on the next level. Where do you want? I'm telling you, if I had my way, I'm not sure it's Abuja would come. No. Are we together now? Lovely place. I love the place, but maybe I would have gone somewhere else. But in the place of prayer. And you would think because God was sending me. Remember what I told you. I used to wonder why it takes God a while to answer and let me tell you, if you're a person of faith, you need to balance your understanding of faith with this thing I just taught you. If not, you'll be frustrated. It is not every time God gives immediate answers and it does not stop him from being God. There is profit in process. And when God finds that in the life of a believer, he will withhold answers intentionally to produce capacity and produce power. I remember praying and weeks turned to months and I was praying and one day as always I was praying my usual prayer and a vision was opened before me and I didn't hear anything all I saw was the map of Abuja and I knew that was it I remember rejoicing I said finally some of you would have said God so it's finally is now why did you now waste my time when I'm already in the Abuja always see what you have become before the answers came always see what you have become god is more interested in what you become than the answer you receive did you hear what i said god is more interested in what you become than the answer if god answered me after day one maybe i would not have this kind of result to the glory of god do you know why because sometimes when answers come and your flesh is still alive, you will think it was a dexterity, your level of spirituality. There is a level of brokenness. There are times God does not answer till you make certain personal covenant resolutions with him. He will wait until the day you get angry and say, okay, God, I'm telling you, if you finally give me this money, I'm the one telling you as I obtain grace, then the answer comes. And so this is what you were waiting for. You would have told me, Telling you will not make you do it. The human being, eh, aside from the dealings of God, is, all, is also a master of deception, even to yourself. Until God prunes you, he cannot trust the things you say because you've said many things that you did not live up to it. You ask him to kill you. He knew you were playing. You would have died a long time ago. You were so emotional, you wanted the result. Oh God, I'm telling you, just give me a job. God said, pray, please, pray. I've already seen your heart. I've seen your heart. 
give me a job even if he's there and God said no I want to make you a multi-millionaire but I have checked your family tree and I've seen the tendencies of pride and the tendencies of flesh and because of the way enemies have insulted you if I give you 10 million 100 million in this state you will first leave me and flog it on the face of those who did not so let me kill that self yes sir occasionally you will shelve the prayer and try to act in the flesh then fail woefully and return back in repentance and say God I'm here he says I'm still waiting let's pray but if it is me that will prosper you something in you must die and by the time you get to a point where one day you will read a scripture and say God I don't care again whether I prosper or I don't prosper whatever happens I'm telling you that as for me and I will follow you for the rest of my life somebody suddenly calls you and says God spoke to me in January and you say in January and you are only obeying now my brother I suffered from January till October because of your disobedience as funny as what I'm saying is this is how it works <laughs> there is an invisible hand that has withheld many answers because the version of you now it will be a risk to your destiny for those answers to drop therefore you pray to receive the blueprint it was in the place of prayer God brought the vision of sound of revival it was right now I'm still praying and say Lord how do you want it to be because I'm not going to assume that just because we did it the way we did it uh -uh, we parted the Red Sea by the mercies of God but how do you want it this time around do you want us to walk on water or do you want us to get a boat if you stand before seven rivers hear God for the seven rivers is the reason why the world struggles they have one result today they cannot produce another one tomorrow because of assumptions listen your prophetic blueprint is sealed it takes engaging in the place of prayer and let me tell you this prayer reveals and prayer purifies what you saw prayer does not just reveal but it purifies there are many times you will see things both the ones God showed you and the ones that came out of emotions are we together now getting up to execute what you saw will leave you in pain just because it came from the place of prayer does not mean it came from God you have your will you are still being transformed who is learning there are many many things that you would think is God that told you submit yourself to prayer and you will be shocked you will have to tell God sorry because at the end of it you will find out that all that confidence of saying it was God is not God that's why you must be careful in the kingdom arrogance is dangerous there are many statements that you make and say I know what God told me and then later God says okay come my son honestly it's not me mm -mm. you were in pain this seed that you raised you felt in your spirit it was me but it was a mix of pain and rent and other issues that led to that thing it was not me at all and then if you are broken you can say God I'm sorry I'm sorry or you can say God no I know I had you and he said me that I, this is God I'm telling you I'm not the one who spoke you are still saying I'm the one who spoke okay remain here and many people remain stunted there prayer does not just reveal the blueprint for your destiny it purifies it because while God is speaking it comes through the lens of your mentality the lens of your mind and many other information can be added that did not come from the throne it is prayer that purifies it eventually you will see that ah, God said do two programs the vision came so powerfully flesh added five more programs and God says reduce it reduce it the remaining five is not me mm -mm. it's not me ah, God but based on what I'm seeing I'm already seeing myself mm -mm. it is not me and then eventually you will see his wisdom I hope you are learning tonight the blueprint only God knows how many things I've had to cancel in my jota that I would have been convinced that it was God when they came now I have grown it doesn't matter what I see or hear I write it and it becomes my place my prayer point I have to take it to the threshing floor are we together now if God says organize a program next week I will write that vision 
you ask the leaders there are times you can see me come with a lot of energy and tell you ah guys there's something good and then you see me keep quiet the leaders are already used to it. once they see me keep quiet like that they don't even bother saying sad you you mentioned that we we're going to russia the other time what happened i'm not ashamed to cancel anything that i see that is not god it's cheaper to say sorry than to be disgraced a thousand times in destiny because of pride are we together see when you walk like this your activities will not be many but your winning percentage will be so high almost everything you do produces extraordinary results extraordinary results there are people who will do 50 things before they win three they keep failing in everything then after 10 activities wasting money wasting time if you lead the people that way they will leave you alone because they've already mastered that something is wrong with your hearing let me tell you this if you want it to be a leader that commands followership you are not god but you must learn how to hear god if you move people left and you say sorry i thought it was right they now go right they now go left they will love you but they stand back and say please let's leave this guy as he goes right and left he he loves god but it's clear that he doesn't know where he's going and people turn and look for direction i'm praying for you in the name of jesus i don't know what is next in the script of your destiny but by the power of the holy spirit my god will reveal it to you expressly the next script of your life let it be revealed for you and hear me where you have already assumed a blueprint that is not in your blueprint whether it came by flesh it came by emotions i pray from my heart for you may god give you the courage to cancel and shelve it now cancel and shelve it now in the name of jesus christ if you are working with god you must have the flexibility that when you realize that this is not God, I know somebody who made up his mind, he sent me a text one day, you know, just maybe three or four years ago, that God asked him, you know, to build a house for his family. And I may not know everything about God, but I know how God works. I said, this guy does not have the capacity to do that kind of thing. And I, I, I know how God works. I said, no, this is not, but the gentleman, you know, took a step of faith, and when did this borrowed money got into all kinds of trouble after a long time i didn't hear from him he now reached me and said i should pray for him god as you know he doesn't understand this thing about god again he's really frustrated i said my friend it is not god it is your confusion about him and right now you are bleeding you are in trouble they will soon jail you the way out is to go to god and repent are we together repent and say lord you've met me in the middle of the fire okay i'm sorry don't leave me there don't leave me there some of you now one of the there is the gift of pain but let me tell you this most people's pain is an indication that you are out of, of you are out of the will of god don't fight the pain use it as a check to go back and say god why is my life difficult why are simple things unusually hard for me it may not necessarily be demonic it may just be that the hardship is a testament that you are outside of the will of god again i pray for you the blueprint for the next level of your life may god release it upon you is someone learning tonight number three very quickly what happens when we pray when we pray we receive direction for the next level receiving a blueprint is not the same as receiving direction receiving a blueprint talks of the mandate for the next level but receiving direction for the next level isaiah 30 21 isaiah 30 21 and thine ears shall hear a voice from behind you saying this is the way listen your blueprint talks of the place but direction talks of the way to the place you can know the place but you may not know the way to the place i tell you this i have learned this as a leader and as a man of god 
that one of the major reasons for the delay of people is confusion over direction confusion over direction your life is as fast as your knowledge of the direction are we together some of you most of you drive here if i tell you go to shop right or any one of these places and buy me something if you know the direction you can almost time your arrival there that in five or ten minutes except for traffic i am there but if you do not have direction even though you know the place you can go round and round and round until you find yourself in another state and people ask you what are you doing here you say i started a simple journey to go to a shopping mall that was 10 minutes away and i began to go and go and go and go and lack of direction not lack of motion many of us the reason why we are stunted in life and in destiny is we have not had the voice saying this is the way walk in it if you're in business here listen to me by god's grace huh i have sufficient financial intelligence by the mercies of god but i will tell you this the biggest risk you can take in your life in this end time is to use common sense you will fail in a way that your life will become a memorial for many people common sense has destroyed people you need divine direction. The unbeliever who is doing business is not under attack because he's serving Satan. You who has vowed to God that you will not bribe, you will not kill, you will not be corrupt. You are the one whose testimony Satan is interested in. You need divine direction. Someone say divine direction. Never take a step until you get clarity of direction. Write that down. Never take a destiny step till you get clarity of direction. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. Let's hurry up. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. I feel like starting ministry. <laughs> you see, Ba, this direction sometimes is not just limited in showing you where to go. This direction is also showing you how to escape trouble. When Jesus was teaching us how to pray, he said, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. You know what temptation is? Anything that can have a hold on you and trap you down, he says, there had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Listen, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able to, but with that temptation, he will make a way to escape. A way to escape a way to escape that means when people put a snare for you to trap you down in life to trap you down in ministry if you know how to pray there is no snare of the fowler that shall ever lay sway on you i'm telling you if the devil puts a trap for you and you actually go in and enter there it's because you did not maximize the riches that come in prayer are we together let us set this trap so that when he comes, he will fall into it in ministry, fall into it in destiny, fall into it. And because you are directed by the Spirit, the Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. In the office, they orchestrate something and leave it for you. Just when trouble is brewing, they've been praying so that they trap you and take you out of that place. Now plus discernment, plus your prophetic destiny and now you have direction, you will be surprised. Most of us lack direction and you must pray. Ladies and gentlemen, direction does not come after one day of prayer. You will need to pray until it comes. But when it comes, you will obtain grace to run. You will run like Elijah when you have direction. I'm praying for you. Every confusion in and around your life, in the name that is above all names, in this season, may my God grant you direction as you submit to pray. May my God grant you direction as you submit to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Direction for the next level. For everyone that seeketh, find it. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. 8 says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone that seeketh, find it. Everyone that knocketh, it shall be opened. You must cry for direction. 
Lord, where do I go with my wife and my children now? I've lost a job. I have opportunities to go to Canada. I have opportunities to go to UK. I have opportunities to go to wherever it is. But Lord, it looks tempting, I confess. But I cry for grace. I cry for grace. Give me direction. Where am I going to now? What is the next level of my life? I, I sense in my heart, I, I, I was praying for the next level in ministry. And I saw Bielsa. It doesn't mean Bielsa is where you go to. It can mean that's where an attack is coming from. You have to pray. Don't assume. Direction. As for me, if God does not speak about the next level of koinonia, we stay here honorably. But when he speaks, there is no power in existence. No power in existence. I rather mark time with God and move straight from this level into another level of victory than to keep taking many leaps without God and life will have to force you to return back to your last place of obedience and start the journey again. Number four, what happens when we pray? Are you ready? When we pray, we contend against spiritual forces that fight the actualization of our destinies. When we pray, we contend against spiritual forces that fight the actualization of our destinies. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Please give it to us quickly. We wrestle. First three words. For we wrestle. First three words. For we wrestle. The idea there is not a physical fight. This is a spirit communication but that there is a contention. There are forces, demonic forces, determined to thwart prophecy, to thwart the purposes of God from finding expression in your life. I have taught you what governs Satan's attacking you is what God has said about your life. If God has not said anything about your life, I assure you Satan is not exactly interested in you. You can offer yourself to be attacked. He will tell you he's busy. What makes Satan interested in you is that he has seen the voice of God towards your direction. And he says, what has God said concerning Joshua Selman? What has God, why is the attention of God in this family? And out of the six people in this family, why is this lady and this guy? Let's go and find out what God is saying. Because Satan knows that God does not waste his time. And every time God speaks, his power, his grace, and his favor follows his word. So Satan looks for those who are carrying prophecy upon their lives. And they become his objects of attack per season. This answers the question, Apostle. How come this year has been full of attacks? Because of the word that came upon you. Now that you know, you don't just say attacks go away. You fight it. It's called the fight of faith. You fight it in the spirit. Many people do not know we have a fight of faith. My brother, hear me. Because God told you you will have a great ministry does not mean you will have a great ministry. Most people don't know how determined Satan is. You want to know how determined Satan is? Watch a life that does not pray and see how he does not stop till he wastes you. Satan does not spare. You will think after six years of oppressing you, he should pity you. The waste goes onward. That's why those who carry his spirit, for instance, terrorists, you see how they behave. You will think they should pity you because you are in pain. They don't mind wasting you. It's a reflection of their father, the devil. If you leave the devil and say, I'm sure he will only touch the family small. <laughs> no. He will only start small, but he will waste everything. As for me, oh, I've made up my mind that my environment will perpetually be under a spiritual military surveillance. I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. And in the name of Jesus, I will fight a good fight of faith honorably. I will not let Satan come near Koinonia. I will not let him come near you. I will not let him come near me. Where will he go? Ask him. He can go where else, but not me. Someone say, not me. Not me. He didn't hear you. Not me. Mm -mm, not me. In the name of Jesus, 
not me means not anything connected to me in the name of Jesus Christ that you give birth to a healthy child and after five years your child starts misbehaving and they tell you it looks like this child suddenly has developed a problem that is the devil you need to know how to engage in prayer most times we discuss problems and we don't pray mothers pray there is a campaign against the children you see I've told you this all our children from age 13 or 14 maybe fair enough 15 down to zero I tell you there is a definite project from hell to waste that whole generation and any family that you can be rich if you don't pray you will be surprised and I'm not talking about the vices that have plagued our world now and unfortunately the institutions that have been set up by Satan to advance Babylon your child returns with something that stops you from sleeping asking you questions you cannot sleep as a parent learning all kinds of useless demonic things the generation of our parents was a generation of loyalty even if they didn't believe you they will respect you till you die but this generation will ask questions why should I believe in Jesus give me at least three reasons I was taught in a school you didn't go to they use chalk and blackboard we are using apps give me an intelligent reason I will give you five while I should leave Jesus give me three while I should stay this is the generation here today we grew up in a generation of Cain and obedience Cain and obedience no questions sit here why mm -hmm. don't ask questions your child will say why and you touch him the government will help him and say why I'm telling you the truth if we don't pray we are going to lose a whole generation lose a whole generation every koinonia child here I'm not talking of adult children our children in the name that is above all names any attack that is on any family if you're a mother here lift your hands or any attack I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus that attack returns back to hell 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 please be seated back to hell back to hell help them the name of Jesus by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and if the devil has crept into any family planting attacks let me tell you this Satan can attack in whatever way he can attack your health he can attack your finances he can attack a husband and a wife they've been living in peace just when prophecy is about to happen the man will have a dream and see his wife with a knife that is demonic manipulation and if it does not have spiritual intelligence sometimes unfortunately they now come to us men of God and we now say ah you've been staying with a witch and that becomes trouble in the family again I'm praying for you any family going through attack here if you're not going through an attack that's all right but if you are going through any your series of events around your life that you have not understanding the last one month the last two months I pray for you be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now strange occurrences in dreams strange occurrences it looks like there are all kinds of enmity from left right and center from the depth of my heart I pray for you may God show you a way of escape listen warfare is real did you hear what I said I owe to teach you the truth warfare is real Satan will attack anything that carries the grace of God including your destiny apostle but I'm doing well in business I just made one billion this month congratulations it's not only you that saw it hell saw it they saw the things you wrote I will give hundred million to God's work and Satan says not when I'm here let's crash this business let's do let's plant a thief or let's change someone who was once good and turn that person somewhere else satan is that determined to destroy your destiny are we together now yes hmm. there are some of you god raised helpers i'm coming there 
We're about to pray some serious prayer this night. Make sure you open up your heart. I tell you. A woman once reached me, true story, and she was really angry at another woman. Angry. And I told her, calm down. And she had a story that somebody who was going to help her, that other woman, they sat down doing women talk, and they started saying all kinds of things against that one. And that one was angry and said, I did not know the woman I wanted to help is like this. And just withdrew her help and support. So when she later opened up and told the woman now who was in need why she didn't help her and traced it to that other one, she was angry. I usually don't have the time to respond to text message, but sometimes when I look at certain things, I know that you need to do some damage control, else people will carry their mindset. The woman was angry. Ah, church people, betrayers. I said, mm -mm, that's not the issue. I said, madam, you are a spiritual person. I want you to look beyond this and to see that there is an attack. Ah, this is for this. I said, no, look beyond this. If you are angry at your fellow man and fellow woman, you have been cheated. You are void of spiritual intelligence. You need to see that there are invisible hands joining the heads of people. Whether it's the body of Christ or your family, I want you to see Satan behind these things. He uses men as puppets. Are we together now? It is the reason why you must pray. You must pray that God will take evil people out of your life. You must pray that God will preserve your peace by your godly means. You must pray. Now, I'm sorry to say this, but I remember there was a time I prayed for a lady, medical practitioner, and how did she contact HIV hospital? Um, you know, using whatever it is. And she did not even know a reaction happened after a few months and that was it and i said lord i will pray for you with all my heart i went back and i was burdened i said this lady did not i mean you can imagine is it a crime now to be in a hospital and this has happened and you see the thing with society is that they don't even have time to hear the truth once people hear whatever everybody runs their mouth people there are people because of their pain they are itching to hear everything bad about your life it comforts them We are going to pray, oh, not my destiny, oh, not my destiny, not my destiny. In the name of Jesus, God has brought me thus far. I will not go up and come down, not my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will not go up and come down. Before I give you the remaining, take a minute and I'd like you to aggressively open your mouth and pray. I declare exemption. Is someone praying? Let it be from the depth of your heart. Exemption from witchcraft. Exemption from evil. Higher and higher, not up and down. Glory to glory, not glory and shame. Increase to increase, not increase and lack. Fire to fire, not on fire today and call tomorrow. Outside, pray, Zaria, pray. Every spiritual force against your relevance, against your advancement, in the name of Jesus, anti-destiny forces, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you came to church tonight. Contend in prayer. Some of you are not praying. Pray. Sakata bakata bakatosh. Labranta kaparakata bakatosh. Rakates kebrenta kebarantos kedech. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every spirit, every gang up of hell against Koinonia, against Joshua Selman. Oh, you come in one way, you scatter in seven ways. In the name of Jesus, someone is praying. Attacks of death, attacks of sickness, mysterious sicknesses that cannot be explained medically. I challenge you. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I put a seal of the finished work of Christ over that situation.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. You are still going to pray one prayer before I ask you to sit. One of the greatest areas of attack in this season is your finances. The Bible says strong men retain wealth. It takes wisdom to attract wealth, but it takes strength to retain it. And the strength of the believer is derived in the place of prayer. Lord, I will not laugh and cry at the same time. No, I have cried before. I will not laugh and cry again. Open your mouth and pray, especially over the supplies of heaven. I will not enjoy helpers and be left destitute again. Every orchestration to take away helpers from your life, to frustrate your finances so that you do not have the liberty to come to church, the liberty to learn the ways of God in peace, challenged by the power of the Holy Ghost. Man of God, pray. Woman of God, pray. Businessman, pray. We contend in the place of prayer. When we pray, we challenge forces, demonic forces, over our destinies, sitting upon the corridors of our destiny. We ward off the arsenals of hell. We establish the power of God over our lives. We give it free way to its manifestation. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Luke 22, 31, 32. Please keep standing. I will still give you the remaining. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, see, you have eyes, but you are not seeing. Satan has a desire. And the desire is to sift you as wheat. 32. But I have prayed for you. Every time I see Satan's desire, what I do about Satan's desire is not to discuss it. What I do about Satan's desire is, to say, is not to say it will not happen. The Bible shows us what we do. That every time we detect Satan's desire over our lives, we engage in the place of prayer. Can I tell you, there are people Satan wants to waste. He doesn't want them to backslide. He wants them to die. Because they have caused too much havoc. And there are people Satan does not want them to cross 2025. It's not about saying God forbid. You forbid it by praying. Open your mouth in one minute and declare that every limitation, every attack over your advancement in the name of Jesus, we curse it by the blood of the eternal covenant. We curse it by the blood of the eternal covenant. We curse it. We dismantle demonic programs over our destinies we dismantle demonic programs over our destinies schedules of darkness orchestrations of darkness manifesting as bad news manifesting as evil we dismantle it online are you praying in the name of jesus not over my life not over koinonia in the name of jesus Hallelujah. Please be seated very quickly. You will stand up again. So when we pray number four, we contend against spiritual forces that fight our, our destinies. Something happened, I think it was maybe like four months or so ago, was it? We are preparing for the US conference. I had finished praying, I was tired, and then I just lay down to sleep. It was not up to 20 minutes. I just felt like some kind of, um, it was like a demonic presence. Very demonic presence within the room. Now, I, I have all kinds of encounters, you have no idea. And as I just sensed that demonic presence, it was almost like a tap to pray again. And I got up with anger. I don't know whether it was related to the conference, but everything on my mind that time was conference. So whatever stands the way, I assume you are interrupting the conference. My God, even in sleep, you can open fire. Yes, 
Shamakatoskiata. Scriptures one, two, three, four. While they are moving, you fire with prayer again. Yes, sir. Don't laugh at what I'm saying. I'm teaching you how to win. Prayers. Alanda Kata. Only God knows what that prayer averted. Maybe it was accident. Maybe it was some trouble somewhere. Minus me. Oh, no way. The realm of the spirit will not decide a lot for me and manifest it, and then I become a victim. No way. No way. No way. Listen, the next time you sense when your spirit man gives you a trigger that something is wrong, don't wait till you understand. Even if you are walking on the road, don't worry about what scripture to bring. You just start praying in tongues. The scriptures are already within your spirit. They will start coming out one by one, like arrows, one by one. In the name of Jesus, one by one. As you pray, God will give perspective to what you are praying about. If you don't pray, you can be praying amiss, saying nonsense, whereas the attack is coming this way. Listen, 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 listen. You see, one advantage of prayer is that you can pray even under your breath. You don't have to disturb people. You are the one who is sensing what you are sensing. You don't have to pray only when you are sensing evil. When you are sensing good, you say amen by prayer. Because God is, you are, you are sensing and one of the ways you sense trouble is that your peace is disturbed. One of the ways you sense good things is supernatural joy that does not have any explanation. Sometimes it can be in the midst of things not working. You just know that your spirit has touched something in the spirit. Ah, your spirit has touched tomorrow. That good news is coming into your tomorrow. But you don't just know. You stay in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, the spirit and the bride says come. It must come. It must come by the power of God. Are you learning? Pray. Pray. Let's hurry up. We're still going to pray. Number five. Now listen to this one. When we pray, we schedule the needed help for every season. Ah, this is a powerful one. When we pray, I want to show you a mystery now. We schedule through prayer the needed help for every season. Acts chapter 9 from verse 10 to 11. While I was studying, preparing my notes, the Lord opened my eyes to this scripture. I'd never seen it in that light. Watch this. This was Saul of Tarsus, who had now become Paul. Listen. When Paul encountered God, he became blind. And he went to the house of Judah and stayed there. And the Bible says there was a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias. Listen carefully. The Bible says, And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord, verse 11. I like this. He says, And the Lord said unto him, Watch this, Arise and go to the street, which is called Straight, and inquire of the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, why will you go there as a helper? Read the last sentence. For behold. Behold. He did not just go there. The man was blind. And he said, Lord, you asked me to preach the gospel. Being blind is unnecessary. But he was praying. And while he prayed, in response to his prayer, verse 12, watch what was happening. Now, unknown to Paul, his prayer was helping to negotiate something serious here. And the Bible says while Paul prayed, he had seen in a vision. Who did he see? A man. There are times you see angels, but there are times you need to see a man. It was in the place of prayer that he saw help coming. He saw a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he may receive his sight. And Ananias began to argue, verse 13, I have heard of this man, the many things, how that he has done. Watch this, while that is happening, Paul was still praying. Do you know, watch this. 
Paul had seen Ananias coming in a vision, but physically Ananias refused to go. And he was saying, God, I won't go. This man, I've heard of the things he has done. If Paul had stopped praying, Ananias would reject that offer and go away and leave Paul blind there and he would remain there. And if you were to interview Paul, Paul would say, I don't understand. In the place of prayer, I saw a vision that Ananias should come and Ananias has refused to come. It's not enough to see. You must pray it to happen. Many of you saw helpers coming and then immediately you saw it, you stopped praying because you said, since I've seen it, it must come to pass. No. While that is happening, there are still negotiations happening. Ananias refused. I have heard of the many things that he has done. But the Lord said to him, verse 14, let's hurry. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. Who gave Ananias this, the explanation? God. Who else would have given Ananias that explanation? Nobody. It was because God said he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. He said, oh really? I've changed my mindset. Can I tell you? There are some of you, the only person who can explain to your helpers is God. Because the kind of reports they have about you, about your family, about your business, it will be over their dead body to help you. At that point, you need to pray. Who is learning? You need to pray the presence of helpers and say, Lord, it is by yourself you will speak to men. I like what promise says here when it comes to take offering. He says, may God put it in the heart of men to help you. It sounds like a very simple prayer, but it's a very powerful prayer. A rich man will not help you because he's rich. He helps you because God puts your matter in his heart. Are we together? Yes. I remember many years ago, a pastor friend called me and humorously was saying, he said, Apostle, you have to pray for me. I traveled to America and someone saw me and he, was, he had discussed that he wanted to give a seat to Apostle. Can you imagine? And the man tried, tried, tried to make sure that he would bring the seat before my pastor friend would travel and package a very quality seat and gave him. He said, please help me and give Apostle. And when he came, he said, no, this is not fair. This man saw me, not day one, not day two. Are we together now? This man saw me, oh, he knows that I'm a man of God too. And he told me he would give a seed. And not even that, okay, he gave apostles on then. He said, you're on for apostle and greet him that I've been blessed by his life. So when he came, he was a very nice man. We we're just talking and, and I was saying, well, he said, no, you have to pray that prayer for me. How can somebody give me a seed to come and give you? <laughs> oh. I want to share with you one story. I won't tell you all of it. Sit down. Many years ago, I was praying, praying seriously, and the Lord spoke to me. Until that time, no one had ever blessed me beyond a certain amount. I'm sharing this to the glory of God to help you. I remember it was in the place of prayer. The Lord spoke to me and he said, son, the same way I have raised people to support the work, I am going to be putting a mandate on people to support you as an individual, not the ministry, you as an individual. I was happy, but I knew already that if I kept quiet, that word will never come to pass because men are very wicked and there are times that God will have to impress upon their spirits. Are we together? I remember taking out time to pray. One day, somebody, I was praying quite honestly, minding my business and then I remember that time, I saw an alert and it was quite a generous alert. I just thought to myself, my God, I even left the money there first so that in case I don't want any Body to come nobody had sent that kind of amount at once and I said what is this a few months later the same kind of amount came again 
a few months later the same kind of amount came again and then it stopped and from that time people will say God has placed it upon my heart I said ah, this thing works so oh. it works you don't pray alone huh but you see because we are in the business of priesthood there is a provision to see that we serve God conveniently as we bless his people and let me tell you the truth from that time I concluded that not all men are stubborn Lord leave the stubborn ones and go to the ones that have vowed that you should use them don't, that's you've heard me I've advised you financially don't tie your mind to one person and say Lord auntie a uncle B must bless me it's a recipe for disaster because an individual can of their will say I won't help this family even though I have the means okay we respect your will carry your trouble and go Lord raise help from another place and where there are no men for our sake raise stones I'm prophesying to someone in this season unexpected sources for the sake of your focus your vision your assignment may my God raise strange help for you strange help for you in the name of Jesus Christ sit down I don't share these stories to brag sometimes it's a it's very difficult but it's important to share them sometimes at least you understand it is to encourage you I remember when we were preparing for sound of revival one time I got rich that there was somebody who wanted to be anonymous and he wanted to find out the amount we we're paying for the venue he wanted to foot all the bills I said no you cannot pay we've already paid the money for the venue even though it was very expensive but we thank God for the honor of being able to do that but how does somebody give that kind of amount hundreds of thousands of dollars and you want to be anonymous no we're a responsible ministry I have to know who you are to tell you thank you he said no the man said he wants to be anonymous he just wants a way that even though we have paid he still wants to give the money every helper has relatives who are begging and he will not give them people don't come because they have they come because their hearts are touched are you learning nobody gives stop saying this man with all the money he has is not giving me you are wasting your time go to the father of spirits in the place of prayer lord every spirit is subject to your word your name place it upon the heart of any man you choose raise help for me in this Abuja I don't want to compromise raise help for me you think God is not faithful to raise help for you except it's not the God of heaven you can call for help in the place of prayer no job but pray you are not lazy your CV is there now I hear a lot of talk and sometimes let me say this sometimes um, we make mockery of prayer and I know what those who say that I know what they mean to say you know we make a lot of mockery on prayer we say everything is not prayer 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 I understand that most people say that because of the fanatism that has driven the prayer ministry and the inefficiency that has come from using prayer as the only key so I understand what they are trying to say when it has to do with the economy there is productivity relationships transformation competence value understanding exchange these are valid principles nobody who wants to prosper and just praise alone uh, you are not using the keys effectively but another side again is there are people who have now said no 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 forget about it it's not about prayer it's not true it's not true the Bible says in everything by prayer everything is finance part of everything yeah I've told you that where prayer is not the key prayer becomes the hand that holds the key even if you have a key you need a hand that turns it are we together now so I'm, I'm teaching you I owe it to teach you there are people who literally prayed their way to favor favor brought the resources wisdom multiplied it are we together now don't sit down and you are under fire there are some of you right now who with all due respect maybe you are owing millions of naira tens of millions hundreds of millions of naira you think it's productivity that will take you out 
productivity will help you start again when you are free. What you need is prophecy. You need to cry on to God for help. Otherwise, you will die in that pit. Are we together? At last, master, it was borrowed. The men were hardworking. The purpose of the axe was for them to cut a tree. They didn't ask God to cut the tree for them. But when the axe fell, it stopped because there was no ability to cut the tree again. And there was a miracle to restore the axe head. After it was restored, they now continued cutting. You do business when the capital is there. When the capital is not there, you are stunted. You need help. You need men. You need systems and structures to help you. Are we together now? There are many of us, the hardship around your life is a direct testament that there is no help. No help in ministry, no help in your home. Nobody has been concerned about your welfare nor that of your children. Are we together now? Don't waste your time selecting men by yourself. I have taught you this. Find a way of believing it. Don't waste your time trying to select men. Look on to Jesus and say, Father, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I pray that you place it upon the heart of someone. Do you know, till today, I still pray for helpers. I still pray for helpers because I need helpers. The higher the assignment, the higher the help that is needed. In every ramification, financial helpers, spiritual helpers, there are people today, God placed a burden upon them to pray for me as their assignment are we together now as an assignment I'm not saying what you do occasionally as their assignment so when we talk of help we're not just talking of you cannot pray enough for God will raise people raise intercessory groups there are some of them I don't even know them but God has placed it as a burden. Pray for apostle. That is your assignment. Say, Father, send help to my destiny. I want you to pray a minute from your heart and watch what God does. Say, Father, send help to my destiny. Pray that last one before I give you the last key. Please pray. Ah, send help Lord send help I need help in ministry I need help over my finances send help some of you you may not need money but there are other things you need very important things you need that make for life and godliness strategic connections you need help access you need help endorsements you need help the goodwill of strategic people you need help in Jesus name we pray when we pray we schedule the needed help for every season every assignment God gives koinonia has a financial requirement my own upkeep as his child and as his servant has a financial requirement it is my responsibility to in the place of prayer call for the needed help if you are too arrogant to call for help then you will find out that it will look as if god sent you and left you alone he says when i sent you lackest thou anything let me tell you the truth i am convinced that for as long as i serve the lord I will not lack bread to eat I'm not serving him because of bread but for as long as I am on this assignment I will not lack bread to eat I'll love him whether there's bread or not sincerely but I will not lack bread to eat and that does not just mean bread for myself for everyone that I have a responsibility over I will not lack bread to give are we together this is my understanding with God. This is my agreement with God. That I love him more than bread. But for as long as I'm serving him sincerely with all my heart, I will not lack bread to eat. It doesn't matter what happens. Even if the earth is brass and the heavens iron, I will not lack bread to eat. You have to believe this. When I sent you, lackest thou anything? And they said nothing. This is not because I'm a preacher. Preaching is only a vehicle to serve the Lord. When you serve him sincerely, he blesses your bread and your water. 
he takes sickness away from you the days that he has a portion for you he sees to it that you fulfill let me give you number six has someone been blessed tonight when we pray our spirits are quickened and we step into a, a realm of discernment when we pray we receive the prophetic blueprint that connects every season to every season when we pray we receive direction strategic direction for the next level when we pray we contend against the spiritual demonic forces that fight the actualization of our destinies that fight prophecies over our lives when we pray number five we schedule the needed help help as men help as advantage of systems number six when we pray we build capacity that qualify us for greater glory when we pray we build capacity that qualify us for greater glory listen to this and then we pray when we pray we build capacity that qualify us for greater glory Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16 when we pray you cannot build capacity if you do not pray Paul prayed over the church in Ephesus that he would grant you the he being God by his spirit according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man someone say strength shout it say strength again say capacity you need capacity within your inner man listen to me the level of anointing that God has placed upon my life now was not the level when we started with him it would be unfair of him to have placed that kind of grace upon my life because my capacity then would not be able to carry and host this level of glory so here's how it works the greater your capacity in the spirit the greater the anointing that God can invest upon you are we together the greater the excelling of the glory that emanates from you the greater the assignment the greater the ease of operation this is how it works the things that were difficult for me yesterday by every standard are now easier to do not necessarily because the challenge is left but because capacity was built in the spirit are we together now yes when you do not build capacity there is a limit to which God can trust you with his program or with the next chapter of your own prophetic program in Christ whatever God wants to do in your life does not just happen at the instance of his will alone it depends on your capacity for some of you God wants to do much but the truth is that you are still at yesterday's level you have not enlarged are we together now you have not broken forth to your left and right back and forth God cannot place greater grace upon your life it is a waste when you pour one drum of oil into one bucket you are going to waste one drum minus one bucket that's what you wasted am i right on that everything beyond one bucket is going to be a waste so you have one drum of oil and you pour that one drum into one bucket the only thing you will have at the end of it is one bucket anything beyond one bucket will pour on the ground that's how many of us are and so because god is not an author of waste he will limit growth and limit progress until your capacity gives you space to do the more when i pray i ask god to enlarge my capacity i'm happy and grateful for where he's brought me but as the mandate as we continue to unfold another layer of what god is doing in koinonia another layer of what god is doing in my life you see that now the apostolic ministry is very progressive as God is trusting us with greater assignments it is not just the awareness of the assignment but greater capacity there is a man of God here God wants to do so much with you but the truth is that at your current level God cannot do much with you there are certain people God cannot bring to your life the wisdom the power the grace you do not have that capacity and so we pray the Bible says but ye all building yourselves on your most holy faith 
praying in the Holy Ghost. It says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. Edifieth himself. Edifieth himself. Verse 4, 2 down to 4. Edifieth himself. Edifieth himself. Edifieth himself. You must learn to edify yourself. There are times you do not have any prayer language at all. You just, I mean, any prayer point. You go to the place of prayer and you are investing time for growth. I have taught you here that among the many assignments of prayer, generally speaking, the first, the greatest of them is for your growth and for your transformation. The day I stop praying as a habit, as a positive spiritual ritual, I have pegged myself at a level and I will never grow again. And you see, when the challenges outgrow your level of anointing, you see that now? You make, you put God in a position where he's going to have to take the people to another place of help, another vessel that is aligned in a greater way. Now, spiritual things and the results we command in the kingdom, they look very easy. It is because the capacity that is producing them in righteousness is at a level that can trivialize those challenges. If you do not grow as the needs of the people grow, it will get to a point where your spiritual stature can no longer be used to solve their problems. This is the tragedy, respectfully, of many, many men of God across this nation, Africa, they became stunted in their growth. The comfort of ministry, a good car, a good house, good honorarium, ease, air conditioning system, business class, luxurious living just eroded the discipline and the passion for prayer. And then they found out that they stayed at a level where they are no longer relevant to the needs of those God has sent them to. And let me tell you this, once you no longer can bless the people God has sent you to, they will detect your exhaustion in the spirit. They can know that you are exhausted. They won't be angry with you, but they know that there's, there's nothing more. This, this man cannot solve the reality of the problem that befalls me. He does not have the grace. He can't take me further from here. My prayer as a man of God is that I never punish you by my carelessness and my refusal to grow. Are we together now? That I do not limit your efficiency spiritually simply because I have refused to contend for greater light, greater growth, greater transformation. The more I am enlarged in the spirit, the more God can trust you with that holy oil. The more God can place that anointing upon your life. I want you to lay your hands on your head and ask the Lord to grant you the grace to pray until you are enlarged. Pray that prayer. To pray until you are enlarged. To pray until you expand. To pray until you are enlarged. That what looks like full oil, by the time you enlarge it, will go down and give space for higher dimensions of that oil to be poured on you. Someone pray. Someone pray. Grace to pray till I am enlarged. Enlarged in the spirit. Enlarged in wisdom. Enlarge for more power. Enlarge to host greater graces, greater glory. One minute you are praying. Make it a desperate, sincere, passionate prayer. I obtain grace to pray. When we pray, we are enlarged. When we pray, we build capacity, capacity that allows the more, the more of his glory, the more of his power, the more of his wisdom. A few more seconds, are you praying? We're in a very serious season as a body of Christ. There is a call for greater enlargement, greater enlargement. God wants to bring greater oil. He wants to pour graces, end time graces, end time anointings. But he's looking for vessels that are enlarged. In Jesus' 
mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.